America's Evil Genius back with you once again, and I uh, wanted to give you just a quick and brief comment and synopsis on today's landmark ruling by the Supreme Court on the Obamacare case. Uh, no graphics, no uh, bells and whistles today. I wanted to get this out here as quick as I could and not spend a lot of time editing and, and post-production everything, so uh, bear with us if you can in terms of... Uh, you know the, the rudimentary aspects of this presentation but I thought this was important enough that we really really need to, to say a couple of words about it today let's just be honest with the Supreme Court's ruling today I believe that this is a frankly a, a black eye on America and on, on our legal system this is a dark day in American history this is truly sad on a lot of levels um, man, where do you start with it? Um, just Chief Justice Roberts, uh, the man who turned out to be a turncoat, turncoat to America, turncoat to the Constitution, he cast a deciding vote and ushered in yet another devastating entitlement program. And you've heard me say it before. When it comes to our debt, when it comes to our fiscal issues, the only major thing keeping those things going, the only major thing keeping us in debt is entitlement spending. It is not military spending. It is not our wars. Military spending is less than 20% of our freaking budget. Entitlement programs right now are over 60%, and who knows how much higher they're going to go now. And he ruled that because this uh, mandate is a quote-unquote tax, despite the word tax not being used to describe it in the actual law itself in the 2,000 plus pages. Because it is a tax, uh, it is permissible. Well, I, I guess in a electoral sense, that means that Barack Obama has now presided over the largest single tax increase in U.S. history. Good luck explaining that in the election, Mr. Obama. And, and I know I've heard a lot of people today on, on the right uh, try and, and remain as positive as they can. And, and I, I suppose there's something, uh, there, there's something natural in that. You, you want to look for the next battle. You want to keep fighting. And I think we should keep fighting. But I've heard a lot of people talking today about, well, this, this ruling, as bad as it was, really does cook Obama's goose in terms of the election. This, this makes the, the election a foregone conclusion. And I think that's probably right. Um, let's face it, any poll that you looked at before today uh, would show you that the majority of the American people thought that the individual mandate was unconstitutional and that they were against it. So certainly with the uh, Supreme Court ruling to the opposite way, I, I don't think that the American people are going to look at that and say, well, you know, I was against the individual mandate, but now that the Supreme Court said it was constitutional, I was wrong. I'm going to change my mind. Bull. Nobody's going to do that. You know, if the American people thought this was wrong before, and clearly they did, then they're not going to say it's right because the Supreme Court said so. They're going to say the Supreme Court was wrong, and the Supreme Court was wrong. You know, the way I look at it, this is a decision that's going to end up being a lot like the Dred Scott case. You know, it's going to go down in history as one of those Supreme Court decisions that future generations of, of not only legal scholars but just average citizens are going to look at this and say, what the F was that Supreme Court thinking? There's nothing legality-wise that actually, and constitutional-wise, that actually makes sense to, to make that ruling, but yet they did it anyhow. But nevertheless, I, I do think this is going to embolden the American people now in, in terms of the election. I think if it, if it wasn't clear before, I think it's now undisputably clear that all three branches of government are working against the American people. Certainly the executive branch, with Barack Obama, obviously, the legislative branch, because they did pass this monstrosity of the bill, and now the judicial branch, because they've turned their back on their, our very own Constitution and made this god-awful ruling. So the American people know that our nation is under siege by all three branches of government. They're going to react accordingly. So, you know, there's no question about it. Barack Obama cannot win election now. Uh, the American people are going to be too hacked off at this to allow that to happen. In a way, that, that, that's really not much consolation for me. Um, sure, I want to see Barack Obama knock out of office like anyone else, but does that truly solve the problem? Does that truly undo what was done today? On the face of it, no. I mean, sure, I know Mitt Romney is saying he's going to repeal this, and I hope he does. He actually said something today about repeal and replace. 
that replace part kind of concerns me. You need to repeal it and don't replace it with anything. This is not the government's job to get involved in this at all. I don't care how many people are uninsured. Not the government's business. Not the consideration of my tax dollars. I don't care. But yeah, Romney's going to try to repeal this, which is great. And maybe if we get a good, solid Republican conservative Congress, we can repeal it. Maybe, I hope. But you know, there's a much bigger issue here. We've got a Supreme Court that has gone rogue. And in order to correct that, that's going to take decades. Remember, these guys have lifetime appointments. I mean, you got to wait on natural causes, essentially, to get rid of these guys. So, you know, this is going to take 10 and 20 and 30 years to get this court turned around to an acceptable Supreme Court. That means it's not just Mitt Romney who has to get elected. It's not just one term of Congress that's got to get elected. Folks, we've got to have conservatism running through the executive and legislative branch for decades on end to undo the damage that has been done by Obama and the liberals that have come before him. And I think there's a lesson here that the American electorate needs to learn. And I, it's going to sound like a harsh lesson, but it's one we need to, to remember. You know, people elected Barack Obama and a Democratic Congress, I would remind you, in 2008, mainly because they were frustrated, they had thrown their hands up, and, and they basically took a gamble. They, they pulled the roulette wheel and said, well, how much worse could it get? And if you look back in history, that's not the first time the American people have done that. Back in the, in the 1930s, they were so fr Americans were so frustrated with the Great Depression and Herbert Hoover that they threw up their hands and took a chance on Franklin Roosevelt. And what did we get? We got Social Security, which has gone a long way towards bankrupting us and towards the debt that we have. We got all kinds of government work programs that prolonged the Great Depression and held down the economic comeback. And then later in the, the early 1960s, in 64, people were so frustrated that a, a president had been assassinated in office, as tragic as it was, and they were scared. And, and they allowed the, the media to tell them that Barry Goldwater and the conservatives, they were a danger, even though the guy that assassinated the president was a communist. That's kind of a stretch, but nevertheless, the people bought it anyway. And what did they do? They elected an ideologue like Lyndon Johnson. And what did Johnson do? Johnson brought out the war on poverty and did Medicare and did all kinds of social programs that have helped to bankrupt us and put all of this uh, civil rights legislation through a lot of which, not all, but a lot of which has exacer exacerbated the racial problems in this country rather than, rather than overcoming them. And then we had Barack Obama. The lesson here is this. When you get frustrated as an electorate, when you get frustrated as a voter, and the media is telling you, hey, you got to go with this really liberal guy over here. Now you see the danger that, that comes from it. You see a Franklin Roosevelt with his Social Security, which is the reason we're up to our eyeballs in debt. You see a Lyndon Johnson with his Medicare and with his war on poverty, which has only increased poverty, not destroyed it. And you see Barack Obama with his Obamacare and now this legal mandate that essentially Congress can tell you to do anything they want you to do as long as they call it a tax. That's what happened today. Even if Obamacare is, uh, is repealed at some point down the line, which hopefully it will be, that legal precedent is still there, folks. That's a game changer. We may not be a free country anymore. And that's not an overstatement. The re repercussions of this long term are chilling. So hopefully, hopefully we can get a conservative in the White House. Well, actually, we're going to have to vote for Mitt Romney, so it's not really conservative. But hopefully, the conservatives can kind of force him in the direction we want him to go. Hopefully, we can get some conservatives in, in the House and Senate and get rid of this, uh, get rid of this Obamacare and, and uh, repeal it and, and really make some strides towards undoing the damage that liberals have done for a half century. But folks, it's going to go on much longer than that. This has to be a fight of 40, 50, and 60 years, just as it took the liberals upwards of 40 and 50 and 60 years to get health care in the first place. This is a long-term battle. And folks, we got to consider a lot of things here. If, if we can't get a thoroughly conservative executive and legislative branch in this election, we might have to really think about some things that are uncomfortable to think about, that, that we hoped as kids growing up and, and, and in history class, we hoped we'd never have to think of, but we might. We have to, at that point, we'd have to really think about 
whether America has some irreconcilable differences. If we have become a country where the Northeast and the West Coast, the liberal areas where they are so bent on ruling the nation with academia and socialism, or at least big government, while we in the Midwest and the South and the heartland, where we are intent on America being ruled by God in the Constitution, and, and that maybe we're, are we really at the point where there's no reconciliation between the two, where there's no common ground between the two, where really we can't coexist anymore? Could we potentially be getting to the point that, and you hate to say the word, but that maybe some of the states in the Midwest and the South have to consider secession? I think we might be getting, I mean, we're not to that point yet. We might have to have it on the table. We might have to consider it, folks. If we can't get solid conservatism in the executive and legislative branch in 2012, we might have to put that on the table because it might be at a point where we've got to say, all right, y'all go your way, we'll go our way. I hope we don't have to get there, but with the decision today, I don't think it's something we can discount either. So we got to keep fighting, and this election is key, not only for the presidency. I think Obama's lost that, but we've got to get conservatives, not just Republicans, solid constitutional conservatives in the House and in the Senate. And we got to get a lot of them. we got to get enough to overcome filibusters and all that. we got a lot of work ahead of us, and it's going to take a lot more than just two years and four years and ten years. This is is a lifetime pursuit that we have right now. We have to spend the rest of our lives undoing all the garbage that the liberals have done to this country through the 20th century and now into the 21st. I hope you're ready. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next time.